What's up guys, it's Brandon J, and today I'm gonna be doing a little bit of pond fishing. I'm finally back from Hawaii. I'm back in Florida now. I had a blast out in Hawaii, it was so much fun, but I am so ready to get back to fishing. Today is extremely hot. It says on my watch that it is 97 degrees right now, so it's extremely hot. We're in Florida, we're fishing ponds in Florida. Drop a big thumbs up if you guys wanna see more pond fishing videos in the future. I'll make sure I get those out to you guys if we get some support on this video. So today I'm gonna to be switching it up all over the place. I'm gonna be using a whole bunch of different techniques and I'm gonna teach you guys how to catch bass in really hot conditions. It's like I said, it's 97 degrees outside. So it's extremely hot. These fish are gonna be moving really, really slow, but it's still possible to catch fish. With it being so hot today, I'm gonna to start off with just using a worm. This is a rage tail worm right here. I actually got this in my last Lucky Tackle Box. If you guys aren't with Lucky Tackle Box yet, I'll leave a link in the description below. You'll save a little bit of money. So make sure you guys check out that link in the description below if you wanna get some dope Lucky Tackle Box stuff. All right, I'm gonna start off with that worm. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it around, probably in some structure, but uh, let's get to fishing. Well, I'm just throwing towards the structure because these fish are, they're tucked up in any of the structure because it's hot, man. It's so hot outside. I didn't feel like a very big one. Hopefully we can get into a bigger fish. There goes another bite. I think. Maybe not. That's a bite too. Golly, it must be a bluegill. It's, yeah, the tail is gone. It's just a bluegill carrying it by the tail. Well, I went from a nice worm to now literally a Cinco. It looks like I have a Cinco on now. So there's no action with this thing now. It's completely dead action. I think I got one there. There we go. Yeah, I hooked that one. That guy's not going anywhere. That's the first fish of the day. There we go. All right, so we got our first bass of the day. It's a really black bass. This thing is really, really dark, which means he was tucked up in that structure. I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy go, see if we can get a few more. You are dark. There he goes. Those fish really hide in the structure when it's really hot. They're looking for shade, looking for places to keep cool. So I just threw that worm Texas rig around some lily pads and sure enough, they were there. All right, so mission one is accomplished. Now it's time to go to mission two. Gonna be using a swim jig. This is a heavy structure swim jig with a Gambler Easy Swimmer on the back of it. This is my favorite way to fish, bar none. This is absolutely one of my favorite ways. We're gonna be fishing this on top of the lily pads. Like I said, these fish are gonna be in the lily pads. They're trying to get structure. They're trying to stay around structure, trying to get any shade they can because it's so hot. So I'm gonna throw this swim jig on top of the lily pads, keeping my rod up. Basically any frog in setup you would use, heavy line, heavy rod, lock down the drag, and I'm gonna just be popping this swim jig over the top. It's my favorite because when they hit it, they come up from the bottom and explode on this thing. So expect some cool blow up. So hopefully we can get a few on the swim jig. It's gonna be a blast. So exciting when you get those blow ups. I don't know why these lilies are dying. They might've sprayed. Happens a lot in subdivision ponds, man. They freaking spray all the plants because the locals or I guess the people living here don't like all the vegetation in the water. They think it looks nasty, but it makes such a great habitat. Like it's really good for the ecosystem, the ponds ecosystem, the fish like it. Everything's good about it. It's natural, but except for the humans, the humans don't like it. Oh, I got one right there. That was weird. <laughs> I just cast it in. I gotta pull him over this vegetation. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's cool. Not a big one, but <laughs> he hammered it right there on the edge of the lily pads. That's pretty awesome. All right, so fish number two right here, got him on the swim jig. Now this is the second technique. Remember these fish are in structure and they're trying to get shade. So they're ambush predators. They're always gonna be around structure, but they do like to hang out in the shade. So this is where the swim jig comes into play. You throw it around the structure and you're able to maneuver through those lily pads where they're hiding and then they'll come up and hit it. Now this one was cool. He bit it on the edge as soon as I threw it in, which tells me two things. Either I threw right on top of his head or these fish are extremely aggressive even though it's hot. So I might be able to use some other techniques. I'm keying in on what this fish did. It hit it out of nowhere. And so I'm knowing that these fish might not want a worm. They might want something a little bit quicker. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. All right, buddy, I appreciate the fight. I'm sorry that I tricked you. I'm sorry that you thought you were getting a meal and you just got hooked. See you, buddy. That's the wrong way. That's, that's the wrong way, dude. Oh, there. Oh, gosh, you scared me. There you go. See you, man. Have a good life. 
probably catch you tomorrow or something. All right, so my next bait is going to be a weightless white fluke right here. I got a Texas rig. No weight though. I want it popping on the top. I want this thing to have a lot of action. That last fish told me basically that they're a little bit more aggressive than I was thinking, so I don't have to throw a worm or a jig, something really slow. I can throw something on the top, a uh, power bait, if you will. Spinner bait is gonna be good here. A swim jig is gonna be good here. Uh, this fluke, hopefully, is gonna be good. I'm gonna throw that out and see if I can catch a few fish. All right, so I'm gonna throw on the edge of these lily pads. There's a whole bunch of like floating, uh, I don't know, it looks like dead algae, but there's a ton of it. And I'm gonna just work this uh, fluke over the top of that. Oh, there goes one right there. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> My drag is, oh man, he's stuck in the crap. Oh no. Just keep pressure on him. I've only got 12 pound test on here, but you keep pressure on him, he'll work his way out. I see him splashing up top there. Come on, buddy. Come on. There he goes. There he goes. All right, I gotta tighten this drag down more. <laughs> Come on, bud. All right, I think he got me off. Yeah, he got me off. My drag was too loose. He pulled me right into the freaking lily pads and he was a small one. Thank God it wasn't a big one. You would have been game over for me. Let's throw out here to these lily pads because this whole thing is covered with moss so there's going to be shade there. I'm just running this fluke across the top of this stuff. Oh, there goes one right there. Yep. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, awesome. That was quick. <laughs> that was the first cast back there with the fluke. So we have another little bass here, nothing big, but these fish are still fun to catch. This is just a good day out on the pond, just fishing. Honestly, sometimes you gotta take what you can get when it's like almost 100 degrees outside. But uh, caught him on the white Zoom Super Fluke Texas rig, just popping it on the top. But this guy was fun. Let's go ahead and get him back in the water. Back to the grass. See you, man. Oh, where are you going? Oh, <laughs> he jumped for it. So I'm thinking a creature bait of some sort, but I'm thinking I want like a big, there we go. These are the ones right here. So this is what I'm thinking right here. It's big, it's bulky, it's chunky. It's got these uh, flaps on the end of it so it's gonna move a lot in the water even when I move it slow. And I'm just gonna Texas rig this and throw it out there in the middle and just move it slow. But this is a big profile slow bait. It's a little bit more intimidating than the worm for the smaller fish. So hopefully this is gonna be our big fish bait today. So obviously I can't guarantee that you're gonna catch a big fish off this or that I'm even gonna catch a big fish off this. but. With the conditions and everything I'm seeing today, I'm thinking if there's big fish in here, they're moving a lot slower and they need something a little bit bigger. So that's why I'm gonna be using this. Guys, I got one on the drop here. I don't think I got him. He hit it on the fall. Like this bait was just falling and he grabbed it. So there's fish out there in the middle, which I said there was gonna be fish deeper, bigger fish, but didn't set the hook on that one, which makes me think it's smaller. Let's throw out there again. I mean, he hit it right there on the fall. I was sitting there looking like, do I have a fish or what's going on here? Hmm. Very interesting that he hit it on the fall like that. Got one. Oh, that's a better fish. Nope, <laughs> still a little guy. <laughs> still a little guy. All right, maybe it's just a bunch of little fish in here. <laughs> I set the hook into him and I was like, man, that's a better one. That's the one we were looking for. Aggressive little fish. Nothing big. I actually think the bigger the baits are getting, the smaller the fish are getting. Like that is a tiny little guy but they are still out there in the middle, which means they're a little deeper. I wish that there was a bigger fish though, man. I, that felt like a good one. All right, let's let this little guy go, man. See ya, buddy. All right. All right, I'm gonna throw out here more to the right. This fish hit it really quick out there in the middle, so there's probably a few of them. Maybe there's a big one out there. I, I don't know. I'm so confused. Little fish have taken over this pond. There's a little fish in the lilies. There's a little fish out deep. There's just little fish everywhere. Come on, Bertha. Where are you at? There's one. Come on, be big, Bertha. 
Be big Bertha. It's a little bit better. It's the biggest one of the day, but still not Bertha. I'll take it though. That's a better fish. That is a better fish. This is the biggest one of the day so far. Not a giant, but biggest one. Oh, guys. All right, all right. So I just found a school of like five or six bass right here. I'm gonna let this guy go over here to not disturb them, and I'm gonna pitch in over towards them. There, there you go, buddy. And then I found the whole school right here. So they're schooled up. Oh. Oh, man, man. They're traveling right in front of me. Oh, come on. I'm just gonna rig this thing however. I don't care how it's rigged. I just need to be able to pitch in front of these bass. Oh my God. Oh gosh, they're just stopping through the weeds. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hopefully I can get one right here. There we go. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, where you at? Where you at? I know you guys are over here somewhere. Oh my gosh. I got the littlest one of the, gr the group. Oh, all right. They're schooling though. There's a there's a ton of them. There's like literally 10 to 12 bass. All of them were pretty big. I of course got the smallest one. All right. So oh okay. All right. You in the water? Are you going in the water? All right. There he goes. All right. So he's in the water. There's a bunch of bass sitting right here in front of me. And I guess what they're doing is I guess they're just sitting there schooling around the whole pond. This bait is destroyed. I need a new bait, so I'm just trying to rig this thing any way I can because these fish are right here in front of me. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, I gotta be super still. Maybe I can get them. So they're schooling in here. I've never seen them do that before. That's so strange. There's big wolf packs of, of bass. It's weird. None of them were big though, which is worrying me. Their the biggest one was like two pounds, which is not that big. That's kind of kind of worrying me a little bit about the population in here. All right, so I pretty much slayed it with the uh, creature bait. I'm actually going to be throwing this uh, chartreuse and white spinner bait now. Uh, I'm using a little bit bigger one just because I'm trying to get those bigger fish riled up if they're even in here. I'm having a hard time figuring out if they're in here or not. Uh, so I'm going to be throwing this spinner bait next. I used that uh, creature bait a little longer than I was expecting just because I was having such a good time with it. The fish were riled up with it. So they are liking the slow stuff, but uh, let's see if they like a little bit of fast moving stuff. This is going to be something I'm moving a little bit quicker. I'm going to keep it on top actually. I'm not going to swim it on the bottom. I already know that the fish are on the bottom. I'm going to see if I can pull some big bass up with this. Most likely I'm going to probably stay on the small ones, but I'm going to try to catch some bigger ones with this. Let's get it. I just had, oh, really? I just had a tiny bass hit this. <laughs> oh man, again, another small bass. This is ridiculous. This bait is bigger than him. What are you doing, little bass? You can't be doing that, man. <laughs> All right, see you, dude. Aggressive. So tiny, it's such a big spinner bait. It's bigger than my hand. Ugh, oh, I just don't get it. I don't get it, man. There's one. That's a, ah, no, it's still a smaller one, isn't it? Dang, he hit it way out in the middle. I guess he's a little bit better, but nothing to, nothing to brag about. <laughs> oh, he caught me off guard. I was just casting away and just boom, solid thud. It's almost hard to believe another little bass. Like that was a giant spinnerbait and it only caught a little bass, but I'm going to let this guy go. Thanks for the fight, buddy. Thanks for the bravery of hitting that giant spinnerbait that was bigger than you. That's, that's crazy. Say what's up to the fam for me. Oh, see you, buddy. All right, guys, so that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I had a blast making this one, man. Even though the conditions are rough, I mean, it's super hot. This is a pretty shallow pond, so these fish are just boiling in this water. 
Uh, it's like 100 degrees outside. I'm burning up sweat. I was still able to get on a few fish today. I used a couple different baits to show you guys that it is possible. It's not just one bait that the fish will bite, uh, but it's really where the fish are and how the fish are moving. Now, I didn't get a big fish today, but I was grinding, man. I was trying and trying to get a big fish. I tried everything. I tried different size baits. I tried fishing in different areas of the pond where maybe the big fish would be held up at, but just nothing. So I'm not saying they're not in here, but I'm just saying, I tried my hardest and I didn't even get a glimpse at size today. The biggest one I saw was probably about two pounds schooling the edge and that was about it. So if you guys liked this video, this was more instructional while still having a good time, make sure you leave a big old thumbs up. With that being said, I'm burning up. I need like three bottles of water. So I'm about to go inside. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. See you buddy. That's the wrong way. That's, that's the wrong way dude.